Morning, Steve Free in Chicago with the morning grain comments. Well, it's the end of the month in July and hope everybody has a safe and nice weekend. Um, as far as prices overnight, we're lower. I think that uh, there's a glob of thunderstorms that popped up in South Dakota overnight, which is weighing on prices. Going home last night, I think most people thought that the Western Corn Belt, the Northern Plains, Canada Prairies would be drier than normal over the next uh, 10 to 15 days. But weather in the Eastern Midwest would be normal. So this pop-up thunderstorms is part of the uh, ridge relaxing and energy across the jet stream. Uh, these rains could move into the uh, southwest part of Minnesota, northwest part of Iowa, but then probably diminish after that. I think coming in Monday, the weather forecast will be the same as what we've seen in July, in that the Northern Plains, Canadian Prairies, and the Northwest Corn Belt will remain warm and dry, and that the uh, Eastern Midwest will see normal. It increases the debate yesterday on what the final U.S. corn yield is going to be. Some people uh, let yesterday drop their yield to 177, even a few 175s versus the USDA's 179.5. This and a little bit increase in export demand for a new crop uh, should tighten up the 21-22 corn supply demand enough that we could actually uh, trend prices a little bit higher before harvest. Uh, any break uh, in harvest prices, though, probably is, is a buy going into 2022. Uh, as far as the bean market is concerned, again, we're watching for China soybean demand. Uh, there was another active day yesterday in meal trade domestically in China, which would probably increase their need for beans. It feels like uh, in Brazil, uh, beans are sold out for now, and that in Argentina, um, the beans are being crushed for, for meal and we'll see just how much competition they can have for us and when China comes in and buys U.S. beans. Again, it only takes 1.8 bushel drop in the national average uh, soybean yield, 50.8, to uh, pretty much wipe out the 21, 22 uh, U.S. soybean carryout. In wheat, um, again, um, yesterday, we followed the final results of the North Dakota crop tour. 29 bushels per acre versus uh, USDA's 28 and the average of uh, almost 44 uh, for the five-year average. Again, they found drought-stricken crops, but not as bad as what some people had feared, and that the quality of the crop is good. 60-pound uh, test weight, uh, high protein, and no uh, shriveled kernels. So it should be a good milling crop, even though it's down. Still, Canada, if you look at the same uh, yield loss, uh, probably is looking at a 20 to 21 million tons uh, crop versus USGA's 31 and 13 uh, exports. Um, we're also looking at a Russian crop that's probably closer to 77 million tons than the government's number, and that reduces their export wheat. Uh, again, U.S. wheat prices are higher than the global, especially the Baltic and, and Germany and uh, even the Black Sea. And so we're not going to get a lot of export demand uh, at these high prices but domestically, the crop is smaller. So on August 12th, the USDA has to answer the questions about uh, global corn production and, and export demand. They have to answer the question about uh, Russian wheat situation, and they're gonna have to answer uh, the question about the US corn uh, yield and the carryout. As always, these are my thoughts, not those of ADM, ADM Investor Services. Have a safe and profitable trading day. And remember, always treat people like you yourself would like to be treated.